Jake Woolen scintillating Shakespeare. Now, when I think Shakespeare, music isn't the first thing that comes to mind, but I'll bet you composers have been inspired by Shakespeare for centuries. They have, they have. And, you know, Shakespeare has spoken to people in many different countries, in many different time periods. There's a universality to Shakespeare, um, which is so astonishing. You know, he captures every dimension of the human experience from the comic and the sort of body mm -hmm. street humor to the sublime and the tragic and so what we're trying to do in this program is to really encapsulate that that whole spectrum of what Shakespeare has um, said to various composers all over the world so you go from the sparkle and the humor of Much Ado About Nothing in a wonderful youthful setting by Eric Korngold, which he wrote when he was 17. Oh, no kidding. Um, and then the lyricism of Gounod's Romeo and Juliet, which captures, I think, really the youth of, of those two mm -hmm. characters. You, know, you forget, they're like 12, they're kids. 13, yeah. 14, they are kids. And that so comes through in his music. Um, and then you see again the, the universality of these stories that they can be transplanted from Verona to the streets and the gangs of New York City with Leonard Bernstein's Bernstein. West Side Story. Okay. And the story still works on an incredibly mm -hmm. powerful level. Um, you get his, you know, his slashing syncopations and, and jazzy harmonies and it's wonderful. Um, then we come to Giuseppe Verdi, who was enthralled by Shakespeare. His whole career wrote three operas based on Shakespearean plays, Macbeth. Otello and Falstaff and we're doing a, a little triptych with one number from each of the three operas ah. and there you get you know the the supernatural dimension of Macbeth you get the insight into the tragedy of the human condition in Otello and, mm -hmm. and the difficulties of, of monogamous rela relationships um, and then you get the the incredible light-hearted humor of, of Falstaff and it's like mm -hmm. confectioner sugar, it's beautiful. <laughs> now, you're the assistant conductor, but on this night you'll be conducting. That's yes. going to be kind of a treat for you too, won't it? Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really looking forward to working with the orchestra again after we had a wonderful time together for the Holiday Pops concert and for Messiah. Yeah. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And interestingly, this falls right around Valentine's Day. So if people want something that speaks to the heart, something a little out of the ordinary to do on Valentine's Day weekend, this would be a good place. That's right. Well, this is a great, great night out. Whether you're going out with friends, whether uh, you want to do a little networking, whether you're looking for a romantic night out with your date or with your spouse, um, it's a wonderful chance to do that. And we hope that um, the couples that may come to the show do not end up like the couples in the Shakespearean plays. <laughs> That is not at all our intention, um, but I think it'll be a great night. But if they come as a couple, also in Springfield, there'll be a special event after the after the performance. That's right. Well, you know, the first line of Twelfth Night, if music be the food of love, play on. We thought it would be great for this Shakespearean concert to have what we're calling a play on after party. Mm -hmm. And so we, we invite everyone that comes to the show to stick around. We're going to have a jazz trio playing. Oh, Our soloists will even put in a little musical appearance. Mm -hmm. There will be Shakespearean themed cocktails. It's going to be a great time. So we encourage everyone to come out and uh, have a good night out with the symphony. Terrific.